I have to make a couple of extra templates for my pen router to complete my chairs and do them correctly. I'd really like to make it so that I can do a house mortise and the mortise all on one jig. I'm gonna to have to see if I can manage that. This is an example of one of the templates I was looking at making. Here's my first take on a prototype, I guess, or maybe the actual thing. A jig to make mortising templates. So I suppose I wouldn't necessarily have to make a template. I could use this for mortises and just set the size that I want. There we have it. Pan and router template jig to make templates. Um, the basic idea is that it'll make almost any template that you need for the mortises, uh, anything that you could handle with the pan and router at least. Okay, so the improvements that I think I could make to this jig, if I were to manufacture one out of aluminum, would be to put some measurements along from the center to the outside so that I know how big my template is that I'm going to make. Um, and then along the bottom edge of here, you could probably put the same thing so that you have the center in the center um, of each of these bars with the measurements going out from either one, kind of like it is up here on the top. Um, I would put bars on the back similar to the little extra bars that help hold the templates in place on the template holder itself so that these stay a little bit more square and don't have this trapezoidal abil ability. Hybrid pan router, how about if you make me something like this out of metal that I can buy? I set up my jig on one of my template holders for the pan router. It's set up according to the dimensions, measured out. It's 13 by about two and a half. It's according to the Excel spreadsheet that I set up to be able to calculate the dimensions for the jig itself. I'm just using a block of uh, DRM that I had that's bigger than the outside of the template that I need to make and I'm using a six millimeter follower and a half inch bit. So that'll give me my mortising template for the outside perimeter of my rails on my chairs. For the inside, I just have to put a bigger follower in the inside here. That'll reduce the size of my mortise. At this time, I'm not really concerned with whether this is lying up square. I'll straighten up my side so it doesn't matter that it's slightly skewed. Um, what matters is that I'm at 1 and 5 eighths on both ends. And I need it 6 and 7 eighths long, and that's perfect. So my formulas are working correctly, that's a good sign. Now I'll set this up to do the outside cuts for the tenon template. My formula tells me that the template for the tenon needs to be 9 16 of an inch wider than my template for the mortise. I'll just cut that square and then we'll line up the rest. Now that I have the points of the center lines marked on by doing the radius from these corners, I can drill in for about a quarter of an inch hole for the screws to go through there on each end and also in the center point, which all of these I've marked with a, uh, the point of my compass to ensure that my bit goes exactly into the center of the holes. The radiuses are marked in advance and for those I'll just trim off the edge and sand down to the radiuses to give me a good rounded radius. So that should be dead center for my mortise. It's cool. Right in the middle of my X. And since this is a horizontal template and not vertical, and I never will use it vertical on the pan router because it's too big. 
um, I've decided I, I would put the holes as far out as possible to give as little misalignment as possible on the jig or on the template holder. If it were vertical, then I would have the center hole and then 20 millimeters out from that center on either side is where you want the holes to be able to line up in the template holder on the pan router. This is just for the countersink. I don't need much, just enough for the heads. The last step is to put a beveled edge on the outside of the template so that I have a varying degree for doing my mortise so I can sneak it into the actual mortise hole. I have made the outside 3 30 seconds of a bit, an inch bigger than it needs to be just so that I have some allowance for that. I'm using a um, dovetail router bit with a top bearing to it that I can sneak up on this. I have a line drawn at a half an inch from the face. That's how high up I'll be cutting away. Later on I'll take care of this extra waste here. So I'll ride my bearing against the portion that is uh, above that. no secret that I hate using electric routers and I did burn the edges a little bit but it's a template so my speed was a little bit slow on those corners where I was trying to be really careful not to let the piece shoot out on me it's all right um, I'll still get the desired angle that I want on my template and I'll be cutting off this extra edge here the maximum thickness for any of my templates is limited by this screw on the Pana router, which is, as you can see, if I can get that out of the way, right at just under five eighths of an inch. So I'm going to make the thickness of my templates just over a half an inch, ensuring that it clears that screw without interfering. Before I cut this edge off, of my template. I've marked where the center is, transferred that from the back side to the uh, outside edges so that as I put my template on the template holder, I can see where that lines up with for center. I've set up a feather board on my bandsaw and I'll be cutting off the back edge of this and taking it down to um, one sixteenth of an inch over a half an inch. That should allow the countersinks for the screw heads to be able to clear without actually cutting off the back side. Those are set in, so I want to make sure I'm not cutting them completely off, but giving some allowance. Now I'll test it on this 2x4 just to see how my mortise and tenon work with each other. Um, got my template on the holder and ready to go. So the first mortise I made is using a 10 millimeter follower and a 1 quarter inch bit. I'll make a second pass using, that was at uh, th about 3 sixteenths of an inch deep. And that'll be like my simulating the housing mortise. Now I'll go with a larger follower. I can actually go all the way up to, so we'll go with a 22 here. So this produces my housed mortise with the outside mortise and then the inside tenon being about an eighth of an inch in using a 22 millimeter follower rather than the 10. Now for the tenon, 
Okay, a half inch bit and a 15 millimeter follower for the tenon. I'll just do a test around it and put it at the very farthest outside setting. I'm just barely sneaking up on it here. There we go. Good outside fit. It's nice and snug. I made a number of tweaks to my mortise template jig and I'm pretty happy with the results I get with it. Um, made some adjustments to the calculator that I'll provide for your benefit. And uh, I think it's working really well. But as far as making a house mortise with a panner router, the conclusion I came to is that it's best to make two templates, one for the mortise and another for the tenon, and simply use different size followers. Problem with that is the biggest follower I have is a 22 millimeter, and I need something more like a 40 millimeter to make the step from the outside tenon to the smaller tenon, and from the uh, mortise going from a small follower to a larger follower, I need to do the inverse over there. So um, I'm going to have to make a couple of followers. Stay tuned. <laughs>